In this tiny box, there are actually 15 different gadgets inside. Because these are the smallest gadgets in the world. This video we've put together mini versions of tech, toys, electronics and all sorts of other stuff. Some of them were so rare, we had to order them straight from the USA and wait a whole month for delivery. But now, let's open it up and see what we've got. First up, we decided to open the smallest Nerf Blaster in the world. Yes, actually works. We haven't even asked yet and it's already replying. Wow, and look here, there are some different options as well. It looks so adorable that it almost feels wrong to even open the box. Oh, it looks so tiny, even tinier than it looks in the box. And just look at those tiny little darts inside. And how funny it is when it loads them up. It fits three mini darts, then you cock the blaster and fire. Yes, forgot to say, just like every other gadget in this video, this micro blaster is fully functional. The only thing is, while we're used to shooting regular nerves at cancel cups, this little popper needed its own set of mini targets, which, by the way, it handled surprisingly well. And despite how simple the whole thing looks, it actually shoots with decent power. Though, yeah, once in a while it does misfire. So it's a very cool thing, I've never seen such a tiny pistols that are working, and especially in the form of Nerf Blaster. And for the uniqueness alone, it already deserves some props. By the way, these little darts aren't made of plastic, they're actually soft like real Nerf ones. And considering the build quality, this one definitely earns a solid rating. You know I've tested a lot of different quadcopters, but this tiny guy right here is officially the smallest drone in the world. And honestly, it looks kind of hilarious, it fits right inside its controller, and it's so small that you can literally balance it on one finger. There's even a little storage compartment in the controller for extra parts. Here we have two spare propellers, drone probes guard, charging cable and two sticks for a joystick. And all of that fits right in your pocket, it takes off. And yeah, it actually flies really well, better than a lot of its bigger cousins. You get three speed modes, it can do flips, and best of all, you can pull all of that off right inside your room. Due to its size, it's very easy to control this drone, and what's more important for the flat, it's very very quiet. Listen. Trust me, even a drone just twice this size would already be way more noisy. But with this one you can fly around the house as much as you want, and it won't damage a thing. It can also fly outdoors, but only if there's absolutely zero wind. The battery lasts about 4 minutes, but it also charges pretty quickly. And overall, the drone is just really fun and super pleasant to fly, especially for the smallest one in the world. To go with it, we also grabbed this guy right here. But honestly, I've always been a bit skeptical about mini helicopters. They never quite fly the way you'd hope. The packaging is pretty fun, and the helicopter itself is tucked right into the controller. But the controller is super weird, big, blocky, and just plain uncomfortable. How I'm supposed to hold this square? And right away, you notice the controls. The sticks aren't even proper ones. Nope. Nope. But when it comes to controls, that's where things get really messy. At first I thought it was just me. And I kept trying to get it off the ground at least once. But after a while, I realized the problem was definitely not me. <laughs> That was the best flight, 10 minutes of trying and 5 seconds in the air. Basically, if you want this thing to fly, you'll need to really work at getting the hang of it. We read the manual, recalibrated the heli and even checked out what other YouTubers were saying. And after all, it turns out it really isn't our fault. One cool thing is that the helicopter charges directly from the dock inside the controller and it takes just 10 minutes to charge. But what's the point if it still can't fly properly? At the last second, the cameraman had an idea. What if we tweak the balance with a tiny weight? 
And guess what? It actually flew properly! I don't even know what to say at this point. But yeah, no way this one's getting a good rating. The world's smallest Rubik's Cube measures just 1 by 1 cm. It looks and feels surprisingly cool. And just like every other gadget here, it's fully functional. By the way, it turns really easily. I thought it would be a lot tougher. For the price, it's actually built really well. But testing it out properly, that's where we hit a snag. Even a regular cube ends up like this in my hands. And, turns out, no one on the team knows how to solve it either. But for those who can handle it, I think it will be a great gift or souvenir. It's easy to take along, but probably just as easy to lose. So yeah, if you do know how to solve one, this could be a pretty fun little thing. In case you've never seen one, here's how the world's smallest water cooler looks. It's a mini replica of a real full-size machine, with both the dispenser and bottle looking surprisingly accurate, and it even comes with this tiny little faceted glass. The best part is that it actually works. And even the bubbles when pouring look just like the real deal. Mm. What a plastic taste. The mechanism is dead simple, but if you open up the bottom and pop in some batteries, It'll start doing the same thing, but with lights and sound. And what else is there to say? Well, for example, we timed how long it takes to empty the whole water bottle. Turns out around 6 minutes. Bruh. So, basically it works, but it's a question, why do you need to buy this? Overall, a solid 5 out of 10. At least it does exactly what it says. It is very hard to believe a tiny blender like this could actually work. But visually, it checks all the boxes. You've got a cup, a lid and even two settings of speed. It runs on two standard batteries or via cable. And yeah, the blender does spin. But just because it turns doesn't mean it actually works. A real blender is supposed to chop some stuff. Or at the very least mix things well. So let's put it to the test. We added some water, tossed in finely chopped fruit and started. At speed 1, it barely moves. Maybe the second will be. And the second speed. Make it spin, but that's all. Honestly, being tiny isn't an excuse for working this poorly. So, in my opinion, we can say it's working. This one definitely doesn't earn a good score. And here we've got a plain looking little box. But inside, it is the smallest iPhone in the world. Well, or a kind of. Cause there are a couple of caveats. First, it's actually called the Servo King 8000, and no, it's obviously not a phone manufactured by Apple. Oops. Secondly, even though it looks like a compressed version of a real one, it runs Android. And also, there is no an Apple logo on the back cover here, cause it's not a full copy, it's just an own device that kind looks similar. But who cares if this is still an insanely tiny smartphone? And also, it works surprisingly well. Even though there's only one real camera lens out of the three, the quality is actually not bad. Inside the box you get a charging cable, a case, a manual and even a screen protector. Where else can you find such complexation? Original iPhones. I don't think so. A tiny SIM tool opens the tiny tray, which fits two full-size SIMs and a micro SD. And yep, the mini screen shows we've got 4G support too. We've tested the world's smallest phone before, but that one only did calls and texts, and this micro iPhone is actually a full-blown smartphone. It makes calls just fine, you can hear and be heard clearly, and also it can record all those calls. The performance is pretty solid. Apps, websites, messengers, it handles all of it. The only issue is that for this tiny screen, you really need tiny fingers. And mine is not quite precision tools. Even the camera, both photo and video are totally usable. And let me tell you, aside from being the tiniest phone around and a cute little iPhone lookalike, it also costs just 30 bucks. And at that price, even full-size budget smartphones rarely work this well. In every scenario we tested, it performed great. And after a couple of hours of testing, I kept getting more and more surprised. No major issues, no serious lag at all. 
It even runs good old Minecraft. Sure, it's an ancient version, with the classic sounds and all. But honestly, I think that just makes it better. All in all, this little phone really surprised us, and it definitely earned a solid score. The world's smallest arcade machine comes in the shape of a keychain, although, to be fair, it must be for really big keys. It's got a joystick and two buttons, and that's the entire control panel, and inside there is just one game. All the gameplay happens through the joystick and a single button for rotating blocks, basically just like in the classic version. Only here, thanks to the tiny screen and micro buttons, the whole thing becomes a lot trickier to play, but that's what actually makes it even more fun. We got so into it, we just couldn't stop playing. I literally had to beat the assistant's high score before we could move on. So, yeah, it's definitely an awesome little thing. Only downside, it's a bit too bulky to be a proper keychain. And it's a pity that only one game is inside. But this next one packs hundreds of games inside a tiny retro-style console. It's shaped like a miniature old-school TV and even turns on just like one, using a classic volume dial. Inside the box you'll find the TV itself, a joystick, cables and a manual. And inside the console, over 500 games covering every genre you can think of, from true 90s classics to surprisingly well-made ports of things like Angry Birds. <laughs> I've tested plenty of these retro consoles before, but this one, gotta admit, is a really original take on the format. They included AV cables, let you hook it up to a full-size screen. Though it's a shame there's only one controller, so you won't be playing with friends. Still, overall, this thing's pretty damn cool. But this next one comes with two controllers right out of the box. You've probably seen a version of this before, but it fits the theme of the video perfectly. Because technically this might be the smallest TV console in the world. You just plug it into the HDMI port and that's it. It boots up right from the back of your TV and you won't even see where the games are coming from. Yet it still packs thousands of legendary titles. With a friend, it's even more fun. Honestly, playing stuff like this can be way more entertaining than a lot of modern PlayStation games. And when you factor in the size and price, this one's a total win. And for all the deads out there, we've got the smallest keyboard in the world. Just two keys and nothing more. Now they won't have to go searching for the right button to reply to your message. This thing actually does have a real purpose. Usually it is used as an extra set of keys for work or gaming, since you can program them to do pretty much anything. So yeah, not bad at all, at least it can be helpful. But now it's time for some less useful gadgets. This is the smallest violin in the world. And at the first glance it looks pretty decent, but do you think it works? Yeah, not even close. It doesn't make a single sound, because it's basically just a toy with some fishing line stretched across. So it's really a secret for me, what's the point of it? Yeah, not a fan of this one. Totally disappointed. The world's smallest radio, on the other hand, might actually be pretty useful. Oh, it seems to be working. Aside from being super cute and running on just two batteries, it really does what it's supposed to do. It picks up different radio signals even indoors. And honestly, it does a pretty decent job. Definitely something you could throw in a bag and take with you, even the volume is surprisingly solid. And here's what we saved for last. The world's smallest printer sounds fun, but there's a catch. It only prints on special thermal paper, which means it's black and white only. The quality is so-so and the paper often costs more than the printer itself. Still though, it's a fun little concept, a pocket-sized gadget that lets you print anything from your phone straight onto paper. The world's smallest desk lamp is also not bad. 
at the very least it's a cute little replica of the real thing. And at most it's actually kind of useful. The light's decent and you can use it as a tiny flashlight, a lamp or, like the manufacturer suggests, a reading light. Although my mom always said reading like that is the fastest way to ruin your eyesight. And finally, the most confusing gadget we've tested so far is this smallest yo-yo. Not only does the concept make no sense to me, not only does it barely even work, but seriously, how can this be called as the world's smallest yo-yo? Take two bearings or soda caps and you'd already have one half the size, for a third of the cost. Good thing you've got me to test all this stuff out and show you the results. And if you enjoyed the video, let us know in the comments. We've still got a few dozen more mini gadgets saved up. So, see you next time.